I think that the treatment with OPC1, I think it helped because I was able to achieve recovery far beyond where my neurological function is. If I were to go back in time, I would definitely enroll in the trial again. It only potentially helped me. It didn't set me back at all. It was fairly easy to do. So I think I would definitely go back and do it. And I mean, best of all, the, the trial still continues today. So even if it doesn't help me personally, it could get to a point where it helps others. And I'm just glad I could help contribute to that cause. The standard test for spinal cord injuries and their recovery is called the INSKI test. You measure the muscle function and the sensation in the patient. And so there's all sorts of different, what they're called dermatomes, which are different areas of the skin that have different nerves that allow them to function. And so, for example, like if you're a C3 injury, then you should be able to feel like on your face and neck, C4 goes to shoulders, five is like parts of the arm, and it kind of goes down the body like that. And it works the same way with muscle function, where like a C4, you should be able to move your shoulders, C5, you can bend your arm, C6, move your wrists a little bit. So they pretty much go through this exam and they test these different dermatomes for sensation with like a little cotton swab. They just swab and they say, okay, can you feel this? Yes or no. And it's a, it's a one or zero type scale. Same thing with, well, with muscle function, they test the strength. They see if you can flicker it at all, or maybe you can bend it, but not against gravity, or you can do it with resistance. And there's different scores that are applied to those different areas as well. But they have different targets that they look for in certain areas. So like, for example, my finger movement here, as functional as it is, is not measured on the INSKI exam. What they look at is they look at you being able to move your thumb a little or bend the very tip of your middle finger, and they count that as recovery, whereas the other areas don't show up. I recognize it's very difficult to actually measure neurological function. There's a lot of factors that go into it. So it's a difficult task in the first place, but there are a lot of things that don't get picked up by the exam, like my ability to move my finger, or maybe there's other movements that aren't quite functional that they're measuring, whereas there's other functional movements that they could probably look into because that, from a patient's perspective, is a lot more important in monitoring recovery. I feel like in doing the INSKI test, it's not great at reflecting people's recovery, specifically my own, like being able to measure the functional movement in my finger that I have, that doesn't show up on the test, where they're looking more for that little slight bend in the middle finger, where that's not nearly as functional as being able to move something else, but you know it doesn't show up on the exam. So I feel like it's not completely accurate on how they monitor patient recovery. So in going through my recovery, I set initial goals for myself and they kind of broke down whether they be daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, just to do this little task here or there. Um, but my ultimate goal was to become independent again, which is not common for someone with my level of injury. After a year going through different therapies and relearning how to do things, relearning how to drive, all sorts of stuff like that, I was able to become independent again and actually went down to college at Cal Poly where I was supposed to be beforehand, was able to enroll that next year. So that's something I'm extremely proud of um, is being able to reach the level of independence that I have because I, I just feel like it's huge, it's everything. And not everyone gets to do that with a spinal cord injury, particularly people with higher levels of injury for anyone who has suffered a spinal cord injury, um, I would definitely say to keep your options open. In regards to clinical trials, there's a lot of great science going on right now and a lot of great advancements and we're, we're right at the cusp. And even if it doesn't benefit you completely, you're contributing to potentially helping others within our lifetimes. So that's I think that's huge and amazing. So I, I thought the trial was great. And I think it could have helped me potentially. 
So I'd say just be grateful for any sort of recovery you can gain and any sort of opportunity you can have because you just need to take advantage of it. You know, don't focus on what you've lost because it takes away from what you can gain. Yeah, right from the beginning, my family and actually my, my whole community um, really rallied around me. It was very touching to see all the people that came out and supported from even the first night I was there. I'm very, very happy for all the people who have supported me through the years, um, and then particularly my family. And then directly after my accident, I developed this passion for, you know, the medical, medical field and um, combined that with engineering and ended up enrolling as a biomedical engineer at Cal Poly. Wanted to kind of pursue uh, research potentially, so I ended up enrolling here at Duke and I'm in the biomedical engineering master's program and focusing in neural engineering, which is another very exciting possible therapy that can help benefit people with neurological injuries and diseases. So very excited that, you know, this, you know, this bad thing that happened to me ended up giving me a lot of great opportunities. And one of them is developing a passion for what I'll potentially be doing for the rest of my life.